What's up guys, Nick here, and today we're tying bass bugs. So the fly we'll be tying today is a fly I call the Bass Burger. The name seemed pretty fitting for a big buggy looking morsel like this. Basically what I was going for with this fly is a Helgramite imitation. If you know bass fishing, whether you fly fish for bass or you use conventional tackle, you know that the Helgramite is a go-to pattern for when the fishing gets a little tough. Maybe you need to throw more of a finesse rig. Maybe the bass just aren't after the big stuff, any big bait fish, anything like that. It always helps to have some bug imitations. This fly is great for that. If you've seen my channel before, you know that I like to keep the flies simple and easy to tie, and that's exactly what we'll be doing here today. So let's get to tying. All right, so I'm gonna go over the materials for this. So first thing is gonna be this number two classic streamer hook. Basically just, uh, just you know, the hook that you would tie a woolly bugger on. And we're gonna take some rubber legs just any old rubber legs will work there. And then we'll take this uh, peacock curl. This is gonna create the nice shell on the back of the fly or we're gonna lay it over. And then the last thing will be some kind of grizzly feather. Um, I use these, the Ewing feathers cause they're extra long. And then the quills on them are real, um, real thin. It's nice to have that, uh, that thinner quill it makes it easier to wrap around the hook shank. And then for the thread, I just go with this big fly, uh, 400 den. And that's it. There's not much to it. As I say, I like to keep my flies simple, make them easy to tie, not overcomplicate them. Let's go ahead and just start your thread. We're gonna cover the whole hook shank up to about right here. First thing we're gonna do is the rubber legs. So the way I do it is I'll grab one of these strands and then I'll fold it in half so that you can see the, the two ends are even with each other. We're gonna come up a little bit here, a little bit like right in front of the hook point. And this is gonna be one side, one set of legs. So if I, I'll turn the hook here you want to tie these in right on the side of the hook shank so they kind of stick out like that. So we'll just tie that loop in. Lock it in. Make sure it's where you want it. Lock that in. And then we're just going to be repeating this all the way up the hook shank, but so just grab one at a time. Fold it in half. Make sure they're, they don't have to be perfectly even, but for the most part. And then this one's gonna go on the opposite side of the legs we just tied in. Equal length. Lock them in. And I'll just trim off these loops. All right, that makes the back legs. So we're gonna move up the shank right about, roughly right about in the middle. Again, it doesn't ever have to be perfect. I don't think the fish care where the leg placement is, but if you're a perfectionist like me, it might bother you. So again, same thing, tying these legs one side of the shank. Fold it in half, go to the other side of the shank, line it up. And lock them in. Trim the loops. Now we're gonna come up to the last set of legs. Right about 
point right about there. You want to leave this space right behind the hook eye here. You want to leave that pretty clear because to finish the fly off, we're going to build like a head. So it looks like a real buggy looking head there. Same thing, fold it in half. One side of the shank. Fits where you like it. Just lock it in, crank it down. Now I leave all these legs extra long so that I can come back after the fly is done and I can kind of trim them up to the length that I like them. You can trim them up super short, but I like to leave them long because in the water, those legs really come to life. They have a nice swimming action and look really awesome. Make sure those are lined up. Just lock them in. Trim off these loops. There you go, your rubber legs are set. This is where it starts to get tricky. But all you want to do is kind of just weave in between the legs. You'll just move them out of the way as you wrap back. And once you get back here, I'll show you how to pull them all out of the way. Now here, if you got like uh, maybe a hair clip, I just use my my material pliers here and I'll just pull all these legs back and then pinch them up at the head. Same thing here, just pull them up, get to the back. There we go. All right, now we're going to tie in the rest of our material. I forgot to mention the other material you need is uh, some chenille here. This is the, I think it's the large or extra large, basically, it's just more. A little bit more fluffy than the other standard chenille. Next, you're going to get a get one of your feathers here. So you want a nice long feather so that it'll cover your whole shank after we wrap the chenille on there. This is what helps make it give it that buggy look like a woolly bugger. And then you just want the, the shorter quills on there. And the last thing is your peacock curl. You want to make sure that your all the fibers, the feathers you have are pretty equal length. You want to get a good bunch like that. And then you can just pull out all the short feathers. Yeah, so you want to you know, do about half inch to an inch of a tail there that you're going to leave behind. Do a couple light wraps to keep it on top because this is going to it's pretty important that this stays on top of the hook shank. It's going to create the back, kind of the shell of the, the Helgramite. So just do some light wraps before you pinch it and lock it in. So once you have it locked in, then what you're going to do is pull the long ends. Pull these back toward the tail and then you'll lock them in on themselves. You can lock that in right there. So once you have all these material, so you should have three. You'll have your chenille, your grizzly feather, and then your peacock curl. And once you have all those locked in, you can release these legs. And then you want to pull your thread back up to the toward the hook eye. Just kind of work through the legs. This part you want to make sure your all your legs are separated correctly. 
All right, so here we go. We're going to start wrapping our chenille. Every time you go around, you just pull those legs out of the way. They'll go right back to where they need to be. And wrap that chenille right up, right up against those legs and it'll help lock them in. And then you'll wrap them right in front of the legs. And then you can move move the legs around exactly where you want them. Right behind them, the next set of legs, and then we'll just wrap right in front of them. And then pull those legs to the side to make sure that they don't they don't come up around. It's easier the further up in the fly you go. And you only have one set of legs to worry about. And again, right behind the legs. And then right in front to lock them in. We're just going to leave about that much space there free from the hook eye. So that's where we're going to build up a head. We're going to put some antennas on it. for your grizzly feather. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just wrap it all the way through. Basically tying a extra long, extra leggy wooly bugger. Perfect. Just lock that feather in. All right, now the most important part is your peacock. And you wanna just give your fly, make sure all your legs are where you want them to be. Pull them to the sides. Looks good. And then you're just gonna grab the long ends of your, your peacock curl here and you're gonna fold it over the top. Make sure it pushes all those fibers down underneath the body. Make sure your peacock is nice and straight. You wanna pull it pretty tight there. Not too tight, you don't wanna break it out of your out of your thread wraps, but tight enough that it's firm and that it'll push down all these feathers underneath the fly. Pinch it, loose wraps, and then cinch it. There you go. It's not close to the eye, you just wanna make sure again, you don't wanna crowd that hook eye. And then just lock those, lock those feathers in. With this, we're gonna trim it as close to the to your threads as you can. Just trim those off. Now we're gonna clean this up. And then we're gonna put some antennas on there. Let's grab some more, one more rubber leg strand. This time we're gonna make it a little shorter. Those antennas aren't as long as the legs. Just separate them like you want, lock them in. Now 
I'll trim off that loop. Do here is we're just gonna bulk up this head. Just give it some wraps. Wrap it to where you like it, however you want your head, however small or big you want it. I usually make it pretty big. And I'll lock it in there. Just do your half hitch or your whip finish right here, right where your thread meets your the peacock curl there. It'll lock it in a little bit tighter and and give you a nice nice separation from the head and the body. I didn't have any black thread, so I just use white and I'll color the head black with a sharpie. Looks pretty good there. Just making sure all the white is covered. It'd be easier if you had just had some black thread, you wouldn't have to do this, but I did not have any. Just had white, so I figured I'll just color it. But that's it. That's your Helgramite right there. You can trim up these legs to whatever length. I usually leave them pretty long, but I'll trim them up. You know, I'll make the the arms up here, I'll make these ones a little shorter and kind of trim them down and then leave the the tail one's a lot longer. I won't even trim those, but just so it has a nice taper up to the head and keeps that buggy look. What you can do as well is, obviously I'll, like I'll finish the, the thread wraps here with the UV resin, but you can also finish the, the shell here because after a while what'll end up happening is if you start catching a lot of fish, their teeth will start breaking some of those fibers. But if you just coat it with a light light coat of whatever it doesn't have to be the uv whatever adhesive you have just coat it real quick it'll give it a nice uh, shine it'll really look like a nice uh, buggy back there that is your your helgramite imitation you'll be able to catch a lot of a lot of bass on that i'm sure it'll even catch trout i haven't tried but you could tie this in a smaller version this is a much bigger version but you can tie it a lot smaller and i'm sure it would catch a lot of other species as well but as always, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in and keep an eye out for the next one.